Hello there. This is Being God's Obedient Servant Channel. And today's lesson, we're in Psalms chapter 89. There's 52 verses in this one. So I just wanted to, you know, just do one chapter. Uh, the title of this chapter is uh, 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 A Masculine of Ethan the Ezraite. Now, of course, remember masculine, that word meaning you know, an enlightened, enlightened or intellectual, you know, so that's what this is. It's kind of like an intellectual statement or an enlightenment of this uh, Ethan. Who is this Ethan, the Ezraite? I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, the we have to remember that no one... Everybody in the Bible is not a requirement. We don't have to have the Bible memorized. We are to study the Word so we know what God wants from us, what He expects from us. And primarily, we study the Word so we understand who God is. This is a commandment. And, yep, studying God's Word is a commandment. I wish I would have known this more when I was younger. Uh, I've learned a lot studying God's Word. And if I knew this stuff when I was younger, it would save me from making a lot of bad decisions. But yeah, you live and learn. And sometimes if you learn the hard way, you, uh, you know that lesson for the rest of your life once you learn it the hard way. But how do we know this is a commandment to study God's word? Because God says, if you love me, you'll seek me. If you seek me, you'll find me. And that's how we learn God's word. And how do we know God commands us to love him? It's in the Ten Commandments. You're to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And also, we're to how do we show love to the Father? By keeping his commandments and statutes. That's what the Bible says. So we have to remember that keeping God's word does not mean that we're doing good works and that's how we get into heaven. Keeping God's word and living as he commands us to is us showing our love to the Father. And that's, you know, it it's... It also gives you, in your life, how do you know that you want, you know, that you do love the Father, that you do love God, and that you more than likely are saved? Because a lot of people question it after a while. It's like, am I still saved? <laughs> yeah, you're still saved because you desire to obey the Lord. You re want to read the Word, you want to get to know God, and want to do things that make Him happy especially with you. Now, some people want to say things about works. You know, that uh, keeping the commandments and statutes, that's doing works, and you don't have to do works. It's uh, those people... You have to understand that there's always people out there trying to find a way to disobey the Bible. They're always looking for a loophole so they can disobey God's word. Says, I'm good to go. I don't have to do that thing. You don't have to do anything that God says. But it's when you want to that tells you who you are. And that's a very you know key part of studying God's word is finding out who you are. Are you right with the Father? Do you love the Father? Do you want to love the Father? Do you want to please Him? Do you want to serve Him? Do you want to be His obedient servant? Because that's what we're all called to be, is an obedient servant of the Lord. Hence the name of this channel. I've mentioned this before, but yeah. 
I like to remind people of things because repetition is a way that you start to remember things. That's why I tell you, it's like when you study God's word, once you read through the Bible completely, you know, you close the book and then you reopen it and start from the beginning again and work your way all the way to the end. Now, with this lesson, I'm only doing two videos a week, you know, to go in, you know, go in with Wednesday services and with Sunday services. So I do them the night before. Some people I know, or whichever, they like to click on them that night and watch them, listen to them. Some people wait till the next day, you know. Some people, maybe not at all. I don't make videos on YouTube and, well, not just YouTube. I do uh, Rumble, BitChute, Odyssey. But I don't make the videos to be famous. I'm not trying to make money with this. I'm not trying to, you know, get clicks and likes you know, and subscriptions. I'm not called for that. I will admit in the beginning, like, oh, okay, look, you know, I go look at the stats and stuff and see how many people read. And I'm like, oh, okay, yay, you know. Quite a few people clicked on it. But it's it's not, I'm not called, none of us are called to serve the world and worldly things. You have to remember that. You're never called for worldly things. And if you have something in, something telling you to do something that's worldly instead of godly, trust me, it is not of God. It is the opposite of God. It is Satan. This is why I tell, try to tell women and educate them that following feminism is following Satanism because feminism tells women to be the opposite of what God commands a woman to be. You know, if you're a gigolo male, you're the opposite of godly. You're following Satan. If you mistreat people, you're not godly. You know, if you're always trying to find a loophole to things and trying to cheat the systems and this, that, and the other, and trying to, you know, live off free money or trying to live off welfare or... Always trying to, you know, if you believe in the dog eat dog part of world and business and seeking money, money and you know possessions and blah blah blah. Trust me, you're not godly. It's, uh, you know, it's. This is why it's important to read God's word so you know who you are. Because if you have no desire of the Father then you do not have the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not getting in. There's two destinations at the end of all this. No one lives forever until after the return of the Lord. After, the, you know, well, if you're part of the first resurrection, you're already there because you'll have access uh, to the tree of life. The tree of life will be with Jesus in the new city. From my understanding of that, because, you know, Jesus will reign for a thousand years. Those who partake in the first resurrection will not partake in the second. So that means you stay there, and the only way we have immortality is the tree of life. But that's the only time we're going to live forever. So... This first life is your tryout to see if you make the team. And every bit of it's in your court. You know, the ball's in your court. Every bit of it is your responsibility. And, you know, I, like I told, uh, I try to tell other people, like, you know, there's no innocent people in hell. Everybody that's there earned it. Everybody in heaven earned it. 
So that's why God is a just judge. And, you know, he's the one to do judgment. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump into this uh, psalm here. It said the 52 verses. It's a pretty straightforward reading. That's why I talked a little bit in the beginning. People need to hear things and, you know, not just scripture. You need to hear lessons in life and other things about God's word. Like I was saying, like my job here is to spread the gospel. To do a Bible study is spreading the gospel. And I reach, uh, I think I reach more people on Rumble than I do YouTube. But, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't matter how many you reach. Because Billy Graham say it helped bring thousands upon thousands of people to the Lord. And somebody witnessed to him. So, if I witness, you know, well, you know, if I witness to the right person, and they become someone like the next Billy Graham, so be it. Because I'm not, I'm not that guy. You know, maybe God can make me that guy one day, but I just don't think I don't see it in my personality. I don't feel God pushing me to, you know, to be that person. This is what he's kind of told me to do. But if you haven't noticed this, if you just clicked on this and been listening so far, this is the Bible study channel where I go through the Bible from the beginning to the end. I don't skip anything because God says, if you're teaching the word, you're to teach all of the word. It's a commandment. If you don't teach all of the word, then you're taken away from the word of God. And there's punishments for that. Also, you shouldn't have a desire to take away from the word of God because people need to hear the truth. Let's go ahead and get started into this. Jump right on in. Psalms 89 verse 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said mercy shall be built up forever. My faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy uh, faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea, when the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Thou hast break, broken Rahab in pieces, as one that is slain, thou hast scattered thine enemies with thy strong arm. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world of the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand, and high is thy right hand. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. 
In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Now, if we, when you read stuff like this, you're starting to notice there's a lot of stuff that New Testament also says. That, you know, the Old Testament, New Testament says the same thing. The Lord Jesus is our defense. The Lord Jesus is our King. King of kings, Lord of lords. This is why a lot of, you know, a lot of people get mixed up being told that the Old Testament is irrelevant. It's like the Old Testament is very relevant. You're to learn all of the word, Old and New Testament. You know, if anyone ever tells you, especially somebody calling himself a preacher or something like that, that the Old Testament is irrelevant, you want to find someone else to follow. Because a preacher is supposed to be the leader of a flock. But if they're leading deceitfully, that's not one you want to follow. Because they will lead you astray. Uh, let's continue on. Then thou spakest in vision to thy holy one, and saidest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted. Now, of course, remember when somebody told me their horn is like, you know, the loud speaking of their word. Is what this is meaning. You know, it's, uh, and for the most part, it's kind of like you, the word spoken. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of weird to have that, you know, the word said in that way, but every time I look at it, it's always meaning something like that's like, it's how you speak or speak with a loud voice. But anyways, verse 25, I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Now, we've got to remember also, Jesus comes from the lineage of David. That's part of the prophecy. This is what, you know, so I always remember that as well. Verse 30. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments... If they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. And I said, this is what we're not under today. This is part of the law. Uh, now, there are punishments and this, that, and the other for disobeying God's word. But under grace, we're given a chance to repent, you know, to make things right. You know, Old Testament times, if you did something wrong against God, you would be punished even if you repented. You know, there's a big difference between the law and grace. But let's continue on 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. 
My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. For thou hast cast off and abhorred, thou hast been wroth with thine anointed, thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant, thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground, thou hast broken down all his hedges, thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and has not made him to stand in the battle. I'm sorry, and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease, and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth hast thou shortened, thou hast covered him with shame. Selah. How long, Lord, wilt thou hide my, thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Now, before going on, you know, some of these ways, when it says that, you know, God says that he will, you know, cast up David forever, we do know eventually Jesus comes from his lineage. And parts like 44 and 45, thou hast made his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth thou hast shortened, thou hast covered him with shame. Now I remember Christ was crucified nude. He was naked on the cross. They stripped him. They brought shame upon him. You know. So some parts of this could be speaking for future preference to, you know, to Jesus, what's going to happen to Jesus. But also, some of uh, the sons of King David were mistreated. King David was also mistreated by his people at one point in time. Because remember from reading about King David that the people started following his son Absalom and forgotten about David even though Absalom wasn't anointed to be king, you know, David was. So there's many ways and stuff, you know, God's people have always been brutalized by people that want to follow wickedness. It's happened throughout all of history. But let's continue on here, get to 47. Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. Now, of course, remember Jesus rose from the dead. He defeated death and hell. Because he was dead for three days and came back. Continue on 49. Lord, where are thy former loving kindnesses, which thou swearest unto David in thy truth? Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. Wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord, wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed, 
Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. And I, like I said, there's 52 verses, and that's the end of that psalm. And, this, and you know, the reading of that psalm. And we're right here at the 30-minute mark. Well, it's a little over 25 right now, but by the time I finally shut up, you know, <laughs> it'll be at 30 minutes. Sometimes I get a little long-winded, and I have to catch myself. But I try not to bore people too much, and... Sometimes reading God's word is a little, you know, tedious, can be a little boring, but you don't want to skip anything because you don't know what part of God's word is going to speak to you. you Got to use some of the simplest parts of it to, you know, answer your questions and this, that, and the other. And the more you study the Bible, the more you know that when God answers you, because it'll be from Scripture. And that way you're not misled. Satan's really good at that, misleading people. But I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. I have talked about, and I'm still dealing with a little bit of an eye problem. But I did find out you know, finally got to get to the doctor. It's not a sty. It was an infection in my eyelid. Of all the weirdest things. Supposedly, at the same time, my mom also had the same type of problem. So, I guess I'm connected <laughs> with my mom. But more than likely, what it was was stuff floating in the air from fall hay fever type things and and we're both, you know, I inherited from my parents and both sub subject to it. But either or, you know, I do have good medicine now that's helping it. So thank God on that. But we got, always got to remember to pray. And thank you for your prayers if you have been praying for me. Um, you know, that's what we are called to do. We're to love one another. Part of that is praying for one another. And part of prayer is communing with the Lord and Him talking back to us. And I've explained it before. He'll use scriptures to communicate with you. Because as you start talking to God and having questions, you instantly, boom, 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 this scripture pops up, that scripture pops up, and it tells you, you know, how to live your life. What God expects of you, the answer to your questions, like, you know, uh, you don't need it. You know, you don't need that, you know, whatever. You're to live a humble life, blah, blah, blah. Most of the time, people always want to ask God about making purchases of fancy things. And God's people are not called to have fancy things in their lives, man or woman. But we have to remember to pray. We've got to pray for each other. We've got to pray for the lost. You know, this world's wrapping up and, you know, we got to try to save as many from the sinking ship while we can. Because once the, once the ship is sunk, there's no more saving anybody. And that goes for yourself. If you're not right with God, you know, if you wait till the ship is sinking, you may miss it all together and lose it you don't want to wait till last moment to get right with God there's so much about God that you know you don't want to skip but like I said this is why we pray we gotta pray for each other gotta pray for the world and pray for the lost but I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson here. So until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.